Good evening. Welcome to our Monday Thursday service here at Ridgecrest United Methodist Church in the high desert of California on this first day of April in the year of our Lord 2021. I'm Reverend Wesley Omer, the pastor, and I'm joined by our music team of Heidi Miller Costanzo on flute and Ted Fisk on guitar. And we have the mother daughter team as singers tonight, Yifen Shin and Brittany Brown. Our tech team is Monty Frisbee and Amy Ochoa. And I'm grateful that you're able to join us either on this live stream or watching the recording later. We will celebrate Holy Communion during the service. So if you have your elements uh, of bread and your drink, whether it's wine or grape juice ready to follow along. And also we will have Holy Communion for drive through from 7 to 7.45 in our parking lot tonight following this live stream service. And so Monday, Thursday is the term we use that comes from the Gospel of John in the 13th chapter where Jesus said on this particular night to his disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Commandment uh, is the operative term. Monday is where we get that word from. And so it is in that spirit of love that I am grateful you are joining us this evening as we worship our Lord together. Bow with me in prayer. O Christ, you who pour yourself out in love, drain to the last drop, we adore you. O Christ, you who kneels as a servant washing the disciples' feet, shocking us in your humility. We adore you. O Christ, you who take bread and wine crystal clear in your awareness of the work you must complete, we adore you. O Christ, you who enters into Gethsemane and falling on your face to pray, uncontainable in your broken heart while others sleep, we adore you. So servant Christ, Redeemer Christ, help us to follow you and to be with you always. Amen. Our opening hymn is Bread of the World. I invite you to sing along wherever you are. Our scripture reading for tonight comes from Mark's Gospel in the 14th chapter, picking up on the 12th verse through the 42nd verse. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. 
make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went into the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the sheep, the sh- I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping, taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. In John's Gospel, for a few chapters, we have the account of Jesus with his disciples in the upper room on that Passover night the night before he was to be crucified. In that room, he washes their feet, as we're told by John, and as we're told by the other gospel writers. He then changes and transforms the Passover meal, the sacramental meal of the Jewish faith, into a way that we, to this very day, follow and keep in remembrance doing what he asked us to do, that we would celebrate the feast, and we call this Holy Communion. And so we remember that it is on this night, this night that is the Thursday before Easter, that this is what Jesus did. 
And we are grateful that we can continue, not only in this tradition, but also in some way in the hope of our lives that we can follow in the footsteps of the disciples. The disciples who are those that stick close to Jesus and say such bold and daring words and yet at the same time have trouble staying awake and falling asleep. They are able to say to Jesus, nothing, because they know that they have failed. As the night goes on, their failures will become more evident. And yet, this is all part of God's plan. One of the things that Jesus tells his disciples in the 14th chapter of John is, I go to prepare a place for you. I think it's interesting how if you look at the gospel accounts, you see so often how things are prepared. Prepared for Jesus, but more often than not, prepared for us, the disciples of that time, and prepared for us, the disciples of this day. Earlier, when Jesus came in to the city of Jerusalem and what we identify as Palm Sunday, he dispatched two of his disciples to go fetch a donkey so he could ride. And now we kind of have a reprise of this where he sends two disciples. We're told in Luke's version that it's Peter and John to go into the city and you will see somebody, a man, carrying a jar of water and follow them into their house and then ask the owner of that house for a room so we can have the Passover. It all seems very cryptic, these things. And yet it seems to me that this, part is, this is part of God's plan through Christ for what has been prepared. The disciples knew it was important to celebrate Passover, being good and faithful Jews. But I find it also interesting that they didn't celebrate Passover with their families and their friends. They celebrated with the one person whom they had pledged their allegiance to and who they were going to follow. And so I think by this time in their lives and their ministry of following Jesus for three years that there was no other place that they would rather be than to celebrate Passover with Jesus. And yet, even though Jesus all along, we're told, in his teachings had given them words about what was to come, he was preparing them, preparing them for what lies ahead, even they could not fully comprehend what was happening. And perhaps, maybe that's part of the story in which there is the preparation of the betrayer. Judas is the one. We are also told throughout the Gospels that the Jewish leaders, being uncomfortable or downright upset or angry at Jesus' teaching, or the adoration and the proclamations that followers of Jesus made indicating that Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah, the anointed one of God, or even God's very self here, now on earth in human form, which is blasphemous. And so they plotted for a way to get rid of Jesus and Judas, we don't know the full reasons of what was happening in his heart, became a pot, part of their plan. And he set up arrangements for an exchange of some silver from them that he would be the one to hand Jesus over. And Jesus knew this on that night in the Passover meal because he indicated it, that there was one there who would betray him. And we are told in the other gospel tellings that he tells Judas to go quickly, do what you are going to do. Go and do what you've prepared to do. I know what you have done. You don't need to wait any longer. 
It's going to take place. It's going to happen. And so they go out into the garden following the meal, and Jesus prays. He asks for prayer support, and of course one of the saddest things is his disciples are unable to do that for him. His prayer is, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. And we could stop the prayer there and we could hear that there is this, what, this sense of doubt, hesitation, pausing in ministry. All things are possible. Remove this cup from me. But Jesus doesn't stop his prayer there. His prayer goes on, yet not what I want, but you want. Or to put it another way, he is saying, Oh, Father, you have prepared this path for me. And even though I am having some second thoughts right now about not wanting to follow this path, yet I yield to your prepared plan. I go to prepare a place for you. The words that Jesus said to his disciples, the words that the Father God said to his son Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. And this place goes through arrest and trial and beatings and mockery and stripping and a cross and death. But Jesus recognizes in all of this that he has been led to this moment and he knows that he will go. And he does. It's interesting how each of us is faced with choices, of course, throughout our life. And those of us that have been exposed to the scriptures or the word of God through someone else, a friend, or somebody that we may not know as a friend but has articulated the message of the gospel, the good news of God's love for all of us. We, when we choose to follow this path, we'll find that there are choices all before us, choices about whether or not we will do this or that, choices about whether or not what we choose to do is in line and in keeping with God's path for us, his divine wisdom. But what's interesting, of course, is that so often we begin to realize that things have been prepared for us. In the Wesleyan understanding of grace, we call this provenient grace, the grace that goes before us in which God has been setting things up along the way in the hopes that we will make the choice to continue on that path to grace. Sometimes we may get a sense of what lies ahead for good or for ill, but hopefully our sense of what lies ahead is tinged with an understanding of divine purpose that God truly is interested in us and cares about us and that we come to understand that God has prepared a place for us, a place in his own heart. And the best example of this preparation is because he sent Jesus to be with us and to show us his love and to show us the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O Holy One, on this night, prepare our hearts anew or for the first time to receive the love that you have for us. Amen.
Battery 100%. Connected to Britney's iPhone. I invite you to prepare your own elements and to follow along with the order of worship. Remember that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We remember that it is a good and joyful thing always to share in fellowship with our loving God, the one who has created us in his holy image and has provided for us. Long ago, God passed over his people of faith and kept them safe and led them out of captivity, providing manna in the wilderness and grapes as evidence of the promised land to which he was leading them. And so we give you anew our eternal thanks, Almighty God, praising you, holy, 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 
are you, God of power and might. Heaven and, glory, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. For Jesus fed the hungry, healed the sick, and washed his disciples' feet and hosted a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. It was by the baptism of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection that God has given birth to his church. And so it is by your great mercy, O God, we are born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. With his disciples on this holy night, Christ took bread and gave thanks to his Father breaking it and sharing it with them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took a cup. He again offered to his thanks to his Father in heaven and shared this cup with his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we come now to offer ourselves to be holy and living sacrifices with him as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and cup on this table and in the homes and locations of those joining with this worship service online at this moment. Bless them as we partake, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I invite you to take your bread and to break it. And then to take a piece. And whether you dip it in the cup or you have your own cups, however you want, but to take it and eat and partake knowing this is the body of Christ, and you may repeat those words, and then to drink, saying, this is the cup of Christ. And so pass and share with one another with the words, the body of Christ and the cup of Christ or the blood of Christ. And once all have partaken, then you may offer a prayer or receive this prayer. Oh God, maybe tonight we are like those first 12 disciples of Jesus on that last supper night. We do not fully understand the significance of what Christ has done. Having tasted bread and fruit of the vine, let us rest in the satisfaction of your divine mystery and grace. Amen. I invite you as we close our service to join in the singing of the hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This?
May the God of ever-present care and abiding love comfort you and watch over you this night. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace.